Okay, so for our last video in section 10.1, we're going to look at question 7, which says, Construct the first few Taylor polynomials for sine x and cosine x based at a equals 0. What do you notice? All right, and so to compute the Taylor polynomials based at a equals 0, we're going to start by finding the values of these functions and their derivatives at 0. And so doing this side by side, we have for sine x, f of 0 is sine 0, which is 0. f prime of 0, that's cos of 0, which is 1 f double prime of zero, that's negative sine zero, which is zero. The third derivative evaluated at zero, that's negative cos of zero, which is negative one. And now notice by the time you get to the fourth derivative evaluated at zero, we wind up right back where we started, right? With sine of zero, which is zero. And now this pattern is just gonna continue. Okay, so we get this pattern zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one, so on and so forth. Okay, now for cosine, we get a similar pattern. This is 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and so on. Okay, so now to construct the nth Taylor polynomial based at a equals 0, this is pn of x, okay, we're going to have f of a, which is just f of 0 now, plus f prime of 0 times x minus a, but again, since a is 0, we're just going to get an x, plus f double prime at 0 over 2 factorial times x squared, and then we're going to get f triple prime at 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed, so on and so forth until you get up to the degree n term. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, next to each one of these derivatives, I'm going to write down their corresponding contributions to the uh, nth Taylor polynomial. Okay, so here's how this works. So for sine x, since f of 0 is equal to 0, right, my p0, my, uh, my uh, constant term in my uh, nth Taylor polynomial, would just be 0. Okay, now f prime of 0, that's 1. So I'm going to get a, what, 0 plus 1 times x. So that's going to just contribute this x. f double prime of 0, well, that's 0. So this quadratic term is just going to be 0. f triple prime at 0 is negative 1, so I'm going to get a negative 1 here over 3 factorial times x cubed, or put another way, minus x cubed over 3 factorial. Then the fourth derivative is 0, so this term is going to be 0. Then for the fifth derivative equaling 1, I'm going to get a 1 over 5 factorial times x to the fifth. Okay, and now you can see there's the pretty nice pattern that emerges, right? All of the even ordered derivatives are zero, which implies that all of the even degree terms in the nth Taylor polynomial, right, are zero. And so we just get x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial minus x to the seventh over seven factorial, so on and so forth. Okay, now for cosine, something really similar happens, except now it's all of the odd order derivatives that are equal to zero, meaning that all of the odd degree terms of the nth Taylor polynomial will be zero. And so we get a 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. Okay, so what I want to do now real quick is to graph some of these polynomials. So here we have the sine curve. We're basing things at zero. So here's x, that's the tangent line approximation. Then there's x minus x cubed over three factorial. So this would be the cubic approximation. And then the degree five approximation, degree seven, zoom out a little bit, degree nine, okay. You can see as we increase the degree, right, these polynomials are bending to fit the shape of our blue sine curve, right? I've mentioned now a few times this idea of trying to bend a wire to fit the shape of our blue curve, right? And the higher the degree, uh, the polynomial, the more bendy it can be, right? The more flexible it can be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take these out for the moment just to make things less cluttered. And here, I've just written in the general expression using uh, sigma notation for pn of x. So now, here I gotta turn it on. So there's your uh, tangent approximation, and then the cubic, okay, so on and so forth. So if I go 
right, to higher and higher order, zoom out, we can see that these polynomials are converging to our sine curve, okay? Now, for the cosine, we see something really similar, okay? So, one was our constant, right, our p0 of x, then one minus x squared over two factorial, that's our quadratic, then the degree four, the degree six, that's an interesting looking curve, uh, degree eight, okay, same idea as what we saw with the with the sine, okay, and again, I can go ahead and take these out and put in general expression, so again, we see this convergence happening as we increase the degree of the nth Taylor polynomial. All right, cool, so that leads us at least to suggest for sine of x, right, that if I were to just continue, right, to go to higher orders, right, I'm gonna get x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial minus x to the seventh over seven factorial and so on. Okay, if I were to take a limit as I let the degree approach infinity, it seems at least plausible to say that that limiting sum will converge to the value of sine of x. And that's actually true. That's something we're gonna investigate in more detail uh, in the next couple sections. Likewise for cosine, seems plausible, right, that looking at the limit of these polynomials, right, we're gonna get convergence to the cosine function. And again, this is true, okay? Now the last thing I'll say here in this video, okay, notice that all of the even degree terms for sine of x are zero. We only have odd degree terms. And if you think back to pre-calculus, you know that the sine of x is an odd function. And you just usually argue that uh, geometrically, maybe using the unit circle, something like that. Well, given this equality here, right, this is an odd polynomial, right? If I replace x with negative x, Right? All of these odd exponents will allow me to factor that negative out. Likewise with cosine, right? This is an even function. And again, you can argue that with the unit circle, but it's also apparent from just this equality here because of all these even exponents. All right, well, that's a good place to stop. I will see you next time. Thanks.